were made through him And without him was not anything made that was made In him was life And the life was the light of man The light shines in the darkness And the darkness has not overcome it No! man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory glory as of the only son from the father full of grace and truth full of grace and truth full of grace and truth in the beginning was the word and the word was you. And once again, I'm Bishop and Most Reverend Dr. Lon Calvin Whitfield. And I'm with the Fellowship Community Church and Ministry out of West Orange, New Jersey. And as indicated, in, uh, we are here in Chicago, Illinois for a conference and wanted to continue our uh, stream and obey God in being able to present to you a message that I believe is very, very important and is going to be uh, uh, life-changing for those that hear it. The Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. God is speaking to the church about his will and purpose, and it is important that we as believers, that we are attentive to what God is saying and what he's already said. Amen. The Holy Spirit is speaking to us today. It is a very present help in the time of trouble. And we need to be listening to what God is saying around us as believers, as individuals who have surrendered our lives to Christ, as examples to be able to help others who are seeking the Lord. And God has prepared their hearts to be able to come to him. 
And he's going to send them to all of us so that we might be able to give them a word that will help them to make the decision to be able to, to have sins forgiven in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you uh, were not uh, privy to it earlier, we uh, read a, mess, uh, a passage of scripture from the gospel of Matthew. And I'm going to read it again for those that uh, may not have uh, been privy to that. The Gospel of Matthew in the 24th chapter, amen, and it's, it's really, I started at the first verse before, uh, but I'm going to start at the third verse uh, in this occasion. The Bible reads Matthew 24, starting at the third verse, and it says, He sat down upon the Mount of Olives, meaning Jesus, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Amen. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Amen. Don't get, don't get concerned. I'm not talking to you. Uh, we're in, uh, the Bible says no man knows when Jesus shall come back. Let me continue. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Amen. Saying, Amen. I am Christ and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled. Don't be troubled about it. Amen. For all these things must come to pass, but then the end is not yet. Amen. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in the diverse places. And all these things shall be the beginning of sorrows. Amen. Uh, amen. They, then, they, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Listen. And shall kill you. Amen. Amen. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Listen to this. Uh and many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Amen. But he that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Once again. The subject of this, uh, this session is the Christian cancel culture. The Christian cancel culture. Amen. Beloved, in, uh, as I go into this, uh, and I'm going to take some, uh, give you some brief uh, commentary from uh, you know, my studies in reference to this, the uh, the cancel culture is the modern social attitude that controversial speech or behavior must be punished through a public shaming, a man silencing, boycotting, firing, bankrupting, deplatforming, and etc. The result is that the offender's influence, presence, or reputation is canceled out. It is proper for whistleblowers to reveal corruption and illegality in this, uh, or for abused women to come forward, comfort their abuser, and make sure that he, confront rather, the abuser, and make sure that he is held accountable. But in cancel culture, goes far beyond that, setting out new rules to retaliate against speech, behavior, or even thought that has been prejudged as offensive or even simply controversial. In cancel culture, people can be ostracized, their reputation smeared, amen, and their careers ruined, although they have broken no laws or engaged in any malice malicious behavior. Uh, 
the 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 verse that I want to center in on a man uh, is uh, chapter nine, uh, verse nine of uh, chapter twenty-four of the Gospel of Matthew. It says that then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you meaning Christians, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. The, the subject and uh, the Christian cancel culture is something that is oblivious to the body of Christ in most and generally, and under this terminology of cancel culture, uh, it is uh, very apparent to uh, yours truly and many others that uh, what Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 24 is absolutely correct. It is uh, not only correct, but it's coming from the heart of God to our ears. And it is something that we need to pay attention to. And in verse four, it says that Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. We're living in a day and time that is not much different to many other eras in history where Christians are being ostracized. Christians are being uh, uh, persecuted. Christians are being uh, marginalized. Christians are, are being devalued. And the effects are, uh, of this uh, uh, phenomena and or cancel culture, a man is, uh, creating a, a, an awful effect upon society. Because the, the Bible indicates that the, the presence of the Christian in society is God's presence in this world. Amen. God is uh, using uh, his remnant, his, his servants. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, God in sundry times, in diverse manners, spoke to the Father via the prophets. Listen to this. But in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son, Jesus, who he's made heir of all things. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is the determining factor. It is the X factor. It is the transformation point. It is the place where we as human beings get to be able to enter into the relationship with God, amen, that he pre-designed from the Garden of Eden. It is absolutely... Uh, God's uh, turning point. It is his God's God uh, made Jesus the 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 point of redemption, the point of that's of of change in the human race. The Bible says that there is no other mediator between God and man except the Lord Jesus Christ. And Amen. When we look at this situation, uh, Amen. We see that there is in this uh, in the the current dispensation that we live in. There is a challenge to the things of God, especially the deity of Christ and the importance of Christian conversion that is absolutely uh, abominable. We see so many different uh, uh, different ideologies and different prefaces and, and, and positions that come from the, uh, the, 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 the heart and the mind of human beings that God has said is detestable, and we are a, a man, uh, uh, we are God's uh, presence in this world in order to be able to communicate his message. Amen. That is the, 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 the uh, substratum, and it's the foundation of the Christian experience. Jesus said, you must believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. The, uh, I mean, the Bible says, you must believe in your heart and confess your, with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and then you shall... You be saved with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with confession is made unto salvation. So that confession of Christ is the outward God, uh, God using us as instruments of his will to communicate his love for a dying world. Amen. A world that, uh, amen, abdicated their position in Eden when we, uh, amen, disobeyed him and uh, listened to the the lies of the enemy to uh, violate God's with God's uh, uh, 
will and purpose and break our covenant with God. So we we see that this is a uh, it's, it's it's a powerful powerful message. It has so many different ramifications as well as implications. This Christian cancel culture. No one wants to believe that there's a cancel culture for Christians. They will believe that there's a cancel culture for any other ideology, any other religion, any other situation. These these religions and these situations are protected by the United States government. They're, uh, they're uh, financed and funded by uh, our country and vehemently uh, protected as and uh, and and uh, appropriated. But in the, the, the body of Christ, there is no uh, mercy, there is no consideration. And systematically over the years, the thing, uh, the, the principles that we have as a cult, as a, a, a country, uh, that are biblically based, are systematically erased from the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the things that make these these fundamental principles and the fundamental uh, positions our country who we are. So, in in other words, we are being uh, we are being accosted from the inside out. And anybody know that when uh, you you really want to attack uh, an organization, you can attack them from the outside. But one of the more effective means is to attack them from the inside attack their structure, attack their fundamentals, attack the person, places, and things that are fundamental to the power and the structure of that organization. And this is the position that comes with the Christian cancel culture. Amen. In Jesus in Matthew 24, went to great lengths to talk to the disciples about the end times and their subjects such as the coming of the Son of Man. And God knows the day and hour that are further down in Matthew 24. But from Matthew uh, 24 verses 1, amen, to 14, there is a narrative that talks about what the climate is going to be like in the, the, uh, uh, in the last days when, uh, amen, uh, we're getting close to because the the verse six says that ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So over the years uh, and the Christian experience, we have had uh, many many occasions where uh, these uh, people thought that Jesus was coming back. And they were looking at the superficial, they were look, looking superficially at the scripture and not uh, through the lens of God's Holy Spirit and listening to exactly what God is saying in order to be able uh, and coming up with prefaces. And many, uh, as the Bible indicates, false uh, prophets were trying to predict when Jesus is coming back. And this goes as even for back as, as in the beginnings of the found, fundamentals, uh, foundation of the Christian faith during the apostles' lives on this 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 earth, and many uh, of them uh, were uh, continually and the narrative of the end times from an apostolic standpoint. Uh, Peter, uh, James, John, Paul; these individuals were talking about the apostasy and the the, the fact that there were going to be false uh, prophets and false individuals. That were going to try to uh, to uh, confuse the body of Christ and therewith making the body of Christ ineffective. The message of Christ, the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, and soon coming, is the power of God unto salvation. But even in that time, there were individuals that were trying to uh, that were the enemy would send and and. Many times an individual who is uh, uh, ignorant of who they are and, and deceived can be can do many times the most damage in a situation. But uh, the Lord is so gracious to us that he has left a remnant. And, and even as he told Elijah, when Elijah thought he was alone and by himself, that God has many that have not bowed their knee to Baal and has not kissed them. 
So in this, this era that we're in, it, it is uh, my observation through the, the, the uh, prompting of the Holy Ghost to tell you that we're in a, uh, a condition of Christian cancel culture. The Christian is being ostracized. And then there are other countries that they are even more ostracized where uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ because of the regime that exists, amen, the other uh, 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 regime and the other uh, nationality and or the other religion that exists, Christians are hunted, very similar to the way Paul, uh, uh, you know, uh, burst into the houses, Saul rather, burst into the houses of Christians and carried them away and hauled them off to prison and killed some of them. Amen. Because of his ideology and false premise and uh, that came with his profession. And I'm here to tell you today, I want to ask you, what are you going to do about this believer? What are you going to do? And as unbelief, as, as, as the un uh, individuals that have not accepted Christ, I want you to be able to observe this phenomena so that you can see that the reason why you're listening to me right now is the opportunity that God has afforded you to be able to know him in the pardon of your sins. It is so important that we understand this Christian cancel culture. Amen. I have never seen and have marked over the years systematically Christian values that are fundamental as indicated in earlier in this uh this conversation fundamental to the structure of our company and to this country and fundamental to the structure of human existence a man being erased being uh, ostracized in many situations uh christians are being kept from jobs and kept from political appointments and things of that nature opting for the the uh, uh, the uh, abominable norm or the 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 the, the uh, premise that that goes with the with the masses of the the geographical area or, or organization and or political environment that exists, and it is something that we need to understand that this is a part of what happens and what is happening based upon the progression of God's move towards the final judgment that we'll come across. And this is, once again, the Bible says, no man knows the, the day of the hour of the Lord's uh, return. But the fact of the matter is that he is going to return. And in all of these things that we read from in, in Matthew chapter 24, especially from verse, nine, verse 1 uh, to uh, verse 14, God is talking about, the initial things that you observe in order to be able to understand that this is the the direction and the finality of things that that he has uh orchestrated and it is is interesting to me that there is a a, a strong delusion in the, the body of christ that uh the, the the christian does not have or will not have any tribulation we think that when we come to the Lord, even though we have uh, these, these, uh, we have uh, God's provision, His power, and His protection, and all of those things that are available to us. But we are on assignment, believers. We are on a, uh, assignment, and then so the Bible says, "Think it not strange that fiery trials shall come upon upon you." God, God is letting you know that this is a fallen world. And the cancel culture for Christians is in full effect, and that there are going to be times it, when you uh, when you uh, you uh, are as a believer when you're uh, involved with what you, what God has assigned to you in in your life. Everyone is not going to agree with you, and this is when the Bible talks about a man in uh, in chapter uh, in verse ten of chapter twenty four. It says. Amen. That and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Amen. That's this is when uh, and and this is a problem many times with believers as well as the fault of of those uh, those ministers and pastors and and bishops and and individuals that have been placed in authority not to communicate a full gospel. 
a full understanding of what God's presence and purpose is, is and what the implications are of them. So when uh, people come to the Lord, they think that they're, you know, if they come across trouble or there's going to, uh, resistance to their, their faith, that a man there's for some reason they're going to something is wrong they don't really have a gospel because people will resist them but you need to understand that this world is a fallen world and i'm here to tell you that you are going to have some resistance there will be a cancel culture experience in your life amen that uh, you will experience also god's protection you will also experience god's favor you will also experience God's foreknowledge and his wisdom. Amen. If you have surrendered your life to Christ, you will experience all of these things because the Bible said that the Holy Spirit, which is the third person in the Trinity, is there for that express purpose. Amen. But it does mean that you are on also that you are on assignment and there, there is a, a, a vineyard that God has assigned to you. And everyone in that vineyard is not going to like your Jesus. And this is the important thing that we need to understand and underscore when we, when we talk about this. And if you're going to come across also in verse 11, it says, Many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. So what makes you think that there are not going to be people who are, uh, you know, who are false prophets, deceivers, individuals who's who have no conscience and we're 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 surprised when we come across people who are so-called in the church a man who are false prophets and individuals who have uh, deceived and are deceivers and the truth of the matter is is that jesus has already said that this is going to be a phenomenon and uh, once again as uh, we move through the new testament or the epistles the, the, the apostles themselves underscore, underscore on many occasions. Uh, John in gospel, uh, uh, Matthew, I'm sorry, 1 John 4, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Amen. So we, we understand that this is something that is, uh, we, we need to understand that this is, this is here. This is something that's going on and something that we need to understand. Amen. I just want to make sure. Uh, yep, that's, that's uh, 1 John 4 and 1. So the narrative is, uh, is that there are going to be deceivers. And I believe that there is a, uh, a couple of uh, other uh, passages in Scripture where this, this, uh, this is underscored. And there is a warning from the apostles. I believe Paul warned <clears throat> Timothy, a man uh, that in in the in the scriptures. And let me see if I can find it. I believe there's one passage in First Timothy, as well as uh, praise the Lord. Uh, there is also a, a passage in uh, uh, Second Timothy. I believe the first passage is, Amen. Uh, in First Timothy, the fourth chapter as well, it, and it starts at the first verse. It says, "Now the Spirit speaks expressingly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils." Amen. It says, speaking lies in hypocrisy. Ugh. Amen. Having their conscience sheared with a hot iron. Amen. And then he goes into a list of things that mark these individuals, forbidding to marry, uh, do not, uh, you, know, uh, you know, trying to make more emphasis of the religious aspects of, of, uh, uh, than the actual their lives uh, conforming to what God has already said, Amen. In His Word, you know, they'll they'll be they'll be marked by individuals that don't want to get married. They want to be uh, they want to abstain from meats and all kinds of stuff like that. 
And, you know, it's nothing wrong with you being a vegetarian and abstaining from meats and all of that if that's what you choose to do. But if you do that, that does not make you any more religious than anyone else. Not how many days you fast or, or the fact that you fasted 40 days and 40 nights or whatever you do that is physical. It does not a man equate your spirituality. It, Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man and your surrender and adherence to the, the specificity that allows Christ to be your savior is the, the point of redemption. That is where it is. And then also we have uh, in scripture, and I'll read one more because I think they're important to be able to understand. There is a passage in 2 Timothy. And Tim, uh, first and second Timothy are uh, the places where uh, uh, Paul is mentoring uh, Timothy, who is the pastor of the Ephesus church. And he's going into great detail of what it, the responsibilities and the requirements of being a leader in the, the body of Christ. And so I haven't gotten off of council culture. What I want to say to the leaders and the individuals that have been assigned to be able to communicate the, the message of the gospel and the word of God. You need to understand that this is a very, very uh, absolutely vital place in the kingdom of God. We have, we have to be able to have the kind of relationship with God that does, that is not frivolous and it is not uh, uh, tossed to and fro. It is not uh, uh, about what the, the, the prevailing culture wants, but it's about what God has already said. Amen. And I I'm, I'm, uh, want you to understand that the cancel culture is going to make you feel like uh, you're, you're not doing what uh, God has required you to do. If you don't agree with uh, the prevailing position, if you don't, if you don't adhere to these things, they will, they, they, some individuals will indicate that your church is not valid. Some, indi uh, some individuals will, will try to ostracize or malign your ministry because they're, these individuals, a man, are a part of the, the instruments of cancel culture to try to deactivate the Christian. And I'm talking about the cancel culture for the Christian. I know that the world, and I've given you a, a little bit of a definition of what the world says cancel culture, but this message and this, this platform today, I'm talking to you about the, the phenomena of cancel culture against Christians. And it's called persecution. Amen. It has been going on since the beginning of time. And once again, in this in, in this current climate, this modern, postmodern day uh, uh, position, amen, it is, uh, it is a distortion that Christians believe that there is no opposition to their Jesus. Amen. It, it is certainly the life in Christ is wonderful. It certainly has its pleasures. It has its, 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 and as a matter of fact, it is the pleasure. It is. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Amen. So the life that we live is above and beyond anything that life is all about. When you are a believer, when you have surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, your life, amen, supersedes anything and everything that is going on in society right now. And I want you to understand, amen, that this is so important. It is absolutely vital that we understand and, and, and we, we, we realize and be able to, uh, you know, counteract as, uh, because, because the Bible says that he that winneth souls is wise. Amen. You want to be a wise individual. You want to be someone, amen, who is about wisdom about doing things God's way, about being able to, to be effective in the kingdom of God. You don't want to be uh, uh, a twofold child of hell, all right, someone who is deceived or fall into the category of being a false prophet. The Bible says that no man can call Jesus to Christ but by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And these signs, all right, so it's not just about you saying that you love Jesus, but these signs follow them that believe. All right, so I'm going to take a break right now, and I'm going to come back. Amen. We're going to talk further and conclude this session about Christian cancel culture. Yes, 
this truth is marching on.
God bless you. We're going into our second segment of the subject of Christian cancel culture. And I want to say personally that I am so grateful that uh, to those who have uh, uh, sent their well wishes to me and uh, based upon the challenges that I've been uh, in getting involved with with my health. And I thank God for you. I really appreciate the fact that you are uh, you're gracious and you thought enough me of me to pray for me and uh, my family and my friends I just want to say and all of uh, the members of uh, our organization I just want to say thank you for uh, praying for me and I ask your continual prayers and that we might be able to continue to uh, praise God and to worship God in the beauty of holiness and I'm so so grateful for you and your your time your your well wishes prayers and support and uh, we're going to continue in this conversation of christian cancel culture and uh, so 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 uh once again uh, the the there's a wealth of information that is uh available in uh, the digital world and cyberspace in order to to give you the world's definition of the uh, cancel culture, but I am uh, assigned by God and to be able to give you a clear picture of Christian ca uh, cancel culture. And this, this Christian cancel culture phenomena is like a mist that exists in society and uh, has been, amen, effective and uh, prevailing and continuous in the, the, the onslaught of the values that God had pre-designed pre for his, his, uh, his people, uh, humanity. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and, and they that dwell therein. Don't you think because you are an atheist or you're some other religion that you don't belong to God? Amen. You can you can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself. That's one of the the the, the attributes that come with us as human beings. As as uh, when God said, "Let us make man in our own image." God gave you the ability to be able to 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 affect change, to to do what Adam did in the garden, to name things. You name your children. You name uh, uh, the things that are around you that are important to you. Attach uh, definition and identity to these things. Amen. This is what God has given us as an attribute. And it is a privilege that comes from the heart of God. But beloved, I need you to understand something today. I need you to understand that we're in a day and time. And, and, and uh, once again, where uh, Christians and this, this whole uh, uh, cancel culture, if you remember, uh, the, the the prevailing uh, uh, simplistic uh, de definition of council culture is when people uh, uh, ostracize, uh, try to hurt, malign, uh, uh, and destroy individuals for a particular ideology or position that they might take. And amen. Uh, they're they're uh, targeting this this phenomena uh, uh, to organizations that they feel. Uh, that are uh, pervasive or detrimental to the, the the masses, amen. And the truth of the matter is, is that there are some organizations that are detrimental. There are some agent, some some uh, uh, organizations very similar to what we as uh, people of color experienced from the Klan in uh, back in the day, and organizations that uh, were uh, diametrically opposed to the advancement of people of color. And uh, there are many, many other organizations very similar to that. And uh, the organizations that uh, a man went out to try to uh, insurrect this country on January uh, the 6th. A man, it was, uh, that was not a permissible thing, but that was an organization that has a, a premise that was diametrically opposed to what God had already preordained that was good as far as this country is concerned, the founding principles, amen. But they felt that because of they, they identified this nation as a cancel culture, amen, and went in to try to overthrow it. So there are many, many different uh, legitimate situations as well uh, as illegitimate situations that the cancel culture phenomena is attached to. But t today I'm talking to you about the Christian uh, experiences for its cancel culture. The fact that 
that uh, and I'm not talking to you about anything that is not uh, a man has not happened before a man uh, the fact of the matter is is throughout the the, the experience in the emergence of God's redemption in the name of the Lord Jesus that's there has been the cancel Christian cancel culture experience Amen. Saul of Tarsus was involved with it. Amen. Other individuals, the Sanhedrin and the scribes and Pharisees of that day, even the, the nation of Rome at one time was in the, the position of a cancel culture mentality. We have to kill Christians. We have to, we have to, their, their, their premise was that they were, uh, we were diametrically opposed to what they felt was the norm. And uh, absolutely, and like many organizations, like Rome, like uh, uh, Saul of Tarsus, there was a conversion situation. And God, and they, they came to an understanding that God is, and God was, and still is, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, first and the last, and started to change. But what happened to all of those people during the time of apostasy? The time that these individuals or these countries or these nations thought that Christians should be killed and ostracized and should not get jobs. And I'm here to tell you in this segment that we need to be very careful, amen, and we need to understand that this is this phenomena exists, and not only does it exist, but it's going to give you a, a challenge, it's going to be a problem in your 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 day-to-day -day life and you need to understand that it's there be ready to be able to have solutions and as well as strategy against that once again uh, god uh, god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and as i said earlier the scripture also says that he that when his souls is wise a man a wise man uh uh, takes up the issue uh, and contemplates the end from the beginning. Amen. So you, you need to understand that this is so important as, as believers and, and as non-believers, you need to understand this is the reason why uh, those people are coming up against Christians. This is the reason why you don't understand why, uh, you know, and there, and there are some, as the Bible talks about, and we left off at, uh, uh, we left off at uh, verse uh, 10, uh, in our previous, uh, in, in our previous sec uh, section. And, but verse 11 says, many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Verse 12 says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So the fact of the matter is, is there, uh, 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 uh don't get, get, uh, uh, struck with amazement if you come across an individual that says that they are Christian and their actions do not match up to what they are saying they are because Jesus said they're going to come and he said also uh, that many shall say in, in that when they stand before the Lord uh, Lord, Lord, have I not uh, uh, let me see if I can find that passage of scripture because uh, we need to be able to hear what Jesus says about this, this is so important, uh, and uh, it, it is so, so absolutely important. Uh, I, I believe it's in, uh, uh, I have it here in Matthew chapter 7, all right, starting at the, uh, the 15th verse. And this is so like the Holy Ghost to line up everything that we're talking about right now. Because once again, uh, Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse, uh, verse 15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Amen. But, are in, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Come on, somebody. And you shall know them by their fruit. Come on. We talked about that in the last section. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? And we're talking about the, the King James. All right, you can't gather uh, fruit in weeds. You can't gather fruit in 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 uh, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, places that have been uh, dried up and destroyed. Come on, somebody. It, so every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring bring forth evil fruit. Come on now, this is this is uh, uh, this is a die uh, 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 
a dichotomy. It is a situation where the Lord is saying, listen, all right, we can't, uh, you, you can't tell me, uh, all right, you know a tree by its fruit, all right? A re if, if you are coming across, and if you haven't surrendered your life to Christ yet, and you're coming across the questions and the various uh, uh, things that make you go, hmm, uh, uh, about the individuals that say that they are Christian, amen, there are some determining factors. There is an acid test. Amen. Because there is, and there is a way that seems right into a man, but the end of that way is death. But God has some, some uh, particular evidence, all right? These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. And you cannot call Jesus the Christ, all right? You cannot call him the Christ except but by the Holy Ghost, all right? This is revealed unto to you. This is something you don't... It be, but uh, you, you, if if you're listening to me right now and you still don't understand the 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 person and the value of of the person uh, of God in uh, Emmanuel in Jesus God uh, uh, transforming transforming himself into a man to to die as a living sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. All right, if that's still an enigma to you, that means that you have God hasn't revealed it to you yet. But you're in the right place. You're in the place where you can you're going in the right direction even now, and God's getting ready to show you. But the acid test is that no man can call Jesus to Christ but by the Holy Ghost. And amen. And these signs, the fruit shall follow them. Amen. Uh, the, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, meekness, temperance, and against such, there is that there is no law. Uh, against such is the evidence of, of the presence of God in the person of Jesus Christ in the life of the individual that you're observing. And you can test them all you want. Amen. You, you'll find out that, that, that those, those, these signs are irrevocable. These signs are, are there because it's God in them. It's not even them. It's not even them. They've been transformed by the renewing of their mind because they received the transformation that came from their decision to, to surrender their life to Christ for forgiveness of sins. So you need to understand that this is what it is. This is where it is. Amen. That's uh, so when when the Bible talks about that uh, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down, it's cut down. Amen. And cast into the fire. Wherefore verse uh 20 Wherefore, by their fruit, ye shall know them. So you need to go and find out what is the, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the, of, of the fruit of the presence of God, love, joy, peace, patience, meekness, temperance. Amen. It is in the Word of God. Amen. And that's where you find that those these that's the evidence of a believer. All right. And uh, if you if you someone says that they're a believer and they continually are, uh, they have no love, they have no joy, they have no patience, they they have no meekness or temperance about themselves. And amen, they're fornicators and adulterers. The, and those those fall into the areas of the works of the flesh, the works of the flesh. Amen. And you need to understand that there is there is uh, a place that talks about. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, right now the uh, works of the flesh and the works of the flesh amen the works of the flesh and uh, it's found in Galatians uh, chapter 5 from uh, verses 19 to 21 and then it goes into now, now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, amen, idolatry, sorcery, in, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, come on somebody, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, and drunkenness and orgies and all these things, amen, That's, those are, the, those are the, the works of the flesh. And when you see those in uh, individuals, and not that you're not going to, uh, you, you, no one's perfect, 
But you, you're not going to uh, see someone basking in these things and calling themselves a Christian. Uh, you know, we, we, we do have uh, desires, but they are mortified, all right? They are mortified by the presence of, of God in the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. God mortifies, he arrests these things in our lives, and the process of sanctification continues to arrest these things in our lives. All right, so, but if you're around someone, you can't, uh, and they're saying that they love Jesus, but they're, they're continuing to do these things, that, that falls into the category of having no conscience, and they put themselves immediately in the category of not being saved. And so you, so, you know, uh, you don't, you don't want to be struck with amazement, uh, beloved. You don't want to be struck with amazement as you seek to, to be able to get to the point where you can surrender your life to Christ. And today is that day. But don't be amazed if you see people like that. Don't be amazed if you see Christians doing abominable things. So-called Christians, rather. Let me get that straight. So-called Christians. Because when if they're in that category, they've already been categorized by God. And, and God is the one. Or if you're a debate person, you know that God is is the is uh, is the one that gives uh, is the judge, amen. And you understand that God is the one that has the final authority and statement of what is true. Jesus says, "You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free." So this cancel culture, this Christian cancel culture, this is not a new phenomenon. This cancel culture. Uh, 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 Noun is something that, is, that has come from today, but there have been many, many uh, different uh, definitions for this phenomena. Uh, you know, many uh, the other other uh, definitions is persecutions. Uh, other uh, definitions are called cleansings. Other definitions, uh, spiritual cleansings, or uh, you know, uh, martyrdom. Those types of definitions. Those are those are examples of previous terms that are uh, synonymous to cancel culture. Uh, you know, uh, and, and many times lynchings and those types of things like that were uh, for uh, African Americans were uh, so-called in the name of being able to, to cancel out or, or to erase them, uh, us from society. And you need to understand that those are the, this is something that has been going on from the beginning of time. In, in, uh, in the Garden of Eden, uh, uh, Satan himself initiated a cancel culture statement. Did God really say not to eat from the, the fruit of the tree of life? Amen. Uh, he didn't really mean that. He, he, what he really was saying, if you eat of it, you're going to come become wise. That was the first cancel culture statement. It is the, the, it is the, 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 the opposition of the enemy of our souls, amen, doing what he does. Amen. Because, uh, uh, and his appearance into this world was because, uh, amen, he, God did not want to destroy a marvelous thing that he created, but he decided to use him. I don't even have time to talk about that right now. Amen. Theologically, I don't have time for it, but I want to, I want to make it clear that we're in a, in a, we're, we're still in the phenomena of cancel culture. And it's like, and the devaluing it, Christian cancel culture, uh, um, to be more specific, and the devaluing of it. And to uh, understand that there are direct ramifications, uh, ramifications, evil ramifications, when we, when we try to, to, to make what God says is right, Wrong. We try to convince people for our own egotistical and our own uh, ideological purposes and premises. We try to devalue what God has has assigned that is fundamental, and we don't. And 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 we as uh, and human beings don't even realize you're dismantling yourself. You can't hurt me without hurting yourself. You can't because it, there are things that are attached to me. I have sons and daughters. I have family members. So you can't hurt me without hurting yourself. All right. You may think that you'll get away. You may think that you'll go on in your life. All right. But the fact of the matter is, is that we are interconnected as human beings. And when one hurts, all hurts. Amen. People think that when God, when Jesus went back to get Thomas, amen, uh, uh, amen, after his, his, his resurrection, Amen. And Thomas uh, was one of the, the the last holdouts 
to Jesus to say, I will not believe unless I'm able to put my finger in his his side and put my my hand on the marks of his of the nail prints in his hands and Jesus showed up Jesus showed up at the an event with the disciples after he was crucified he he was buried and rose again and before he ascended he showed up because Thomas was a part of a set Amen. Uh, it was part of a divine set that he had preordained and God does not make any mistakes. God is not going to leave until he takes, until he gets what he wants out of the situation. And that's where he has been <clears throat> since the beginning of time with us as human beings. God did not forsake us. He's merciful. He's kind. He is in control of the helm. And it doesn't matter what created being a person, a place, or a thing that arises to come against it. God will use it. The Bible says all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. God is not going to leave until he gets what he wants. Amen. Out of what he has already pre-designed. So you don't have to worry about it. This world is not out of control. This world is not uh, in a situation where we we have no hope. It is a lie from the devil. God is still in, in control and the, the plan and purpose, a man and the agenda of an almighty God is still going on in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I need you to understand that this cancel culture is not canceling anything. This, this Christian cancel culture is only good because the Bible says that the trying of your faith worketh patience and let patience have its perfect work in you. You're only making the, 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 making the situation stronger. Keep on doing what you're doing. If that's what you're assigned to do, just like Jesus told Judas, whatever you go and do, go and do it quickly. Amen. Because the, the fact of the matter is, is that you're on a mission for God anyway. Amen. The Bible says, let the wheat and the tail grow together. And in the end, he will do the separating. Amen. So this Christian cancel culture, you need to know that it exists. And that the believer needs to wake up out of this, this, this trance of thinking that the only thing God is here to do is to get you a car or to get you a husband or a wife or to get you uh, a house or whatever it is. Those things are byproducts of the love of God. Those things are, are, are given, amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But amen, it is not it, it, it is not the mission that is not your objective. Your objective is a relationship with God. Your objective is to return to the Eden experience that God pre-designed from the foundation of the world. That is your objective. That is your objective to do what, what God had designed us to do before the fall, which is to walk with him and to, to be able to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as we walk with God. And in the person of Jesus Christ, God makes it so. Amen. He, he, he redeems us back to the Eden's experience. But we need to understand, and those that are watching us, you need to understand that this Christ, where this Christian cancel culture, that it, there is a Christian cancel culture. And when you try to cancel out the Christian, when you try to cancel, I'm talking about the real believer, those that have surrendered their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about some sort of uh, uh, some sort of misconception of what Christianity is talking about. I'm talking about the real thing. I'm talking about the real thing that has the deity of Christ attached to it and the adherence to what God has said and the evidence, amen, by, by the, the, the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. The, the evidence of a connection and a relationship in redemption through the power and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what it, those that's that is the Christian can uh, uh, the the Christian cancel culture that you come up against, and it, it is life itself. It is a foundation of this world. It is the thing that makes us rel that makes us uh, relevant and makes us authentic as human beings. And you're coming up against that. But but you have. I need to tell you before I get ready to leave. You're coming up against something that's indestructible. You're coming up against something that is attached to the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the God of heaven and earth, the Alpha and Omega, and He cannot be moved, as they used to say in the old church. 
So what you're coming up against, as Jesus told Paul on the Damascus Road, how, you know, can't you understand that you're kicking against the pricks? You're kicking against something that is immovable. You're kicking against something that's going to hurt you more than you think you're hurting it. So the, so, uh, so the Christian cancel culture, if you must continue to try to do it, you need to understand that it is your demise that you're digging. I think the old folks used to say, you dig one ditch, you dig two. Amen. That's what's happening when you come up against the believer in, in the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the, the blood-washed believer, the believer that has surrendered their life to Christ. Amen. The individual that is that is a sign, and and even in this broadcast right now, the 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 petition goes out to you. The way Paul said, "I beseech ye, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable." And and as you listen, you may not be a believer right now, but the petition in this description and and and, and presentation. And you understanding the, that there is a Christian cancel culture for the believer as well as the believer. This is your invitation. As an unbeliever, this is your opportunity to be able to finally understand the reason why the world is framed the way it is and the, the ebbs and flows of society is, is what it is. And, as, and, and that is, this is your time to, to surrender your life to Christ. But as uh, a, 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 a Christian, you need to be comforted, amen. You need to understand that this is a part of the assignment, and amen, that the, but God takes good care of his people. But this is a part of the assignment. Are you on your assignment, believer, today? Are you, are, are you fighting the good fight of faith? Do you have your armor on the whole, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, amen. Putting on the, the helmet of salvation, the the sword of the spirit, uh, which is the word of God, a man, the feet shod in, in the preparation of the God, walking in a, in, with the understanding that I'm here to, to tell someone else about the goodness of God in the person of, of Jesus Christ. Loins girt about, your know, midsection girt about with truth. Amen. Let your, your midsection, let your core be the truth of what God, already, God said in his word. The shield of faith where you can quench everything. And after you got on all of your armor, the breastplate of righteousness, the, 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 you know, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, the, the blessed breastplate of righteousness, uh, loins good about with truth, amen, helmet of salvation, all those things. These are spiritual implications. These are physical implications. Uh, 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 physical pieces that indicate a spiritual position. Do you have it, believer? And ultimately, the shield of faith. When you believe God, Amen. You can overcome anything because God has never let in any, any let, never let us down. He's never let us down from the beginning of time. God has been faithful to us. He's put up with everything that we've thrown that our fallen nature has thrown, has has uh, uh, produced. And he's still faithful. He's still loving. He's still kind. He's still merciful. So you need to understand, believer, that you have an assignment. And amen, God is calling you to a higher place. And I hope that you will receive that assignment and understand that the cancel culture is there. And amen, but the cancel culture was canceled on the cross. The cancel culture was defeated 2,000 years ago when Jesus said it is finished, all right? And the cancel culture ultimately is going to be completely canceled when he returns, amen? Because the same way Jesus came up, the angels told the disciples, the same way you, you see him go up is the same way he's going to come back. And amen, we don't know when it is, but we know it will happen. We don't know what time it is, but we know it will happen. We don't know what date it is, it, it is it, we know it, it will happen. So you need to be comforted. And the Bible says be comforted with these words, believer. So we, we, we beseech you, if you're listening to this and you think that this is something instructional, it is. And you think it's something educational, it is. Amen. But it's more than that. It's your opportunity to be able to cross over from death to life and have you and everything that belongs to you. Because I heard the word of God says that God will save you and your whole house. He's not only after you, he's after everything around you. 
and you have a vineyard that God wants to wake you up and let you know that you've been assigned to. So the Christian cancel culture is something that has existed since the beginning of time. And in this postmodern day era, this cancel culture definition is attached to the believer and has been and will be the continuation of the phenomena of persecution of the church. And as Jesus once again said to Paul, it is I who you persecute. You think you're persecuting people, you're persecuting me. Because Jesus said, whatever you've done to the least of them, you've done it unto me. Let's pray, beloved. I want you to understand and we're going to come back again on one of our Sunday worship services and we're going to talk about this in two weeks but I want you to understand this Christian cancel culture phenomenon is real it is the unseen elephant in the room it is the mist that hovers over our society but it has been defeated at the core and no weapon formed against it shall prosper. Bow your heads with me. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the conversation that you've given us and afforded us today. We ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for those that are listening to us, that they might hear and they might understand and be able to be a, a force in the Christian cancel culture eradication most more importantly Lord that they might understand that this is their time to know you in the pardon of their sins that Jesus came to seek and save the lost and Lord I pray right now that those that have may, may not have, have received Christ would bow their knee right now or stand or lean or whatever they have to do and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner because all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. And I surrender my life to you right now. Save me, Lord Jesus. Save me today that I might be able to have eternal life and I might be able to, to witness to those more importantly, save my soul and use me in the kingdom of God in order to be able to help someone else. Lord Jesus, thank you. I receive you right now. You said if I believe in my heart and confess with my heart from this day forward, I will confess that you are Lord and Savior unequivocally. And I thank you for saving my soul because of it. In his name the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you prayed like that, you a transformation took place in your heart. Something happened that is irrevocable. No one can stop it. No, nobody can do anything about it. You are saved. And I want you to find yourself a church, find yourself a place that you can go and you can worship find yourself a place. And if you can't find any place, you can hang out with me and our URL is fellowshipchurch-us.org www.fellowshipchurch-us.org It's not the best site, but we have some materials there to allow you to be able to come into a covenant relationship with the Lord. Once again, thank you for allowing me to touch on the subject of Christian cancel culture. Be back in two weeks. We'll talk again about it from a different perspective. But I believe that the Bible says to comfort each other with these words when you understand what God has already pre-designed for you. You'll have comfort. You'll have calm. 
You have peace in your life because you know the end from the beginning. God bless you. This is Bishop and Most Reverend Dr. Lon Calvin Whitfield of the Fellowship Community Church and Ministry out of West Orange, New Jersey. So glad to be with you. We'll look forward to the next opportunity. God bless.
except the one who believes, believes that Jesus is the Son of God, the Son of God, yeah. Who is it that overcomes the world except the